Hey guys, this is an overview of the C10 conversion harness. So I will take your factory truck Gen 5 harness and rework it for a standalone setup. So when you get it back from me, it'll look like this. Here's your ECU, your fuse panel. Open up one hand here. You have a 50 amp relay up top. This does your ignition circuits. This is your 30 amp relay for your fuel pump. And this is your battery constant memory fuse for the transmission and the ECU. You'll have strain relief at the bottom. It'll be all weather sealed. You'll have an interior harness that plugs in here so you can unplug it, run it to the cab of your pickup. And you will have your pedal, your ignition turn on, and your brake signal circuit, and as well your, your OBD2 port. Coming out of the fuse box here, everything you'll, will be labeled. This is your fuel pump output, so this will power your fuel pump. Starter solenoid wire, hook this up to your starter solenoid from your key switch. Your key sit switch, when you turn the key to start it, will send 12 volts, and this will pass through to your starter. Here is AC um, clutch input. 12 volts will operate your AC compressor and engage the clutch and the variable displacement valve. Here we have your AC, not AC, your fan signal wire. That will go to your PWM fan if you're using it. Your ECU and fuse panel, how I like to do it, it's gonna be hard to do this with one hand. When you install it, I like to put the ECU down low and mount it like this against your core support of your truck. Looks really good that way. Really clean, simple. The only thing that goes inside is this little section of harness here. Coming over to your, your L83, or your L86, or your L82, or L84, L87. There's all sorts of numbers here, but uh, truck engine. We don't have a water pump on this one. This one's an L84, so it's a different water pump I took off. But anyways, everything's labeled here. This will connect to your temp sensor. DOD, um, displacement on the demand, will plug in to your valley cover sensor. Um, it's really not necessary, especially since we're not enabling it in the tune. But um, I'll leave it there unless you request to have it deleted. And this three pin little guy is oil pressure. It plugs in here. Um, this is labeled 12 volt battery right here. What I like to do is go to your alternator stud right here. So let's go on your alternator stud. You still have to connect your alternator to your battery with a four gauge, six gauge um, thick power cable. This is how we get. Um, battery power to your fuse panel here. While we're over here, we have your throttle body connection, alternator, and I programmed this so your alternator charges correctly. And here's your mass airflow. Um, when doing a factory harness, I leave it at factory length so you can go to either side. If it's way too long for your passenger side, just take it and tuck it into here. You'll never see it and you can get your length dead on. Um, you get your coils. I don't label the coils. There's really no way to install them incorrectly. So just install it here and tuck your loom down in here so you don't see it. Coming back here, we have your passenger O2 sensor. Um, this is a dark gray connector. Um, I have the part numbers on my website for this. Basically, dark gray is used from 2014 to 16. So... That's the passenger side. You got a ground for your cylinder head. And right here, you got your passenger fuel injection setup. Back here, this is a 6L80 automatic transmission setup. Run that down to your transmission. On this side, you will have your driver's fuel injector injection setup. Down here, this is kind of a sub harness built onto your engine, but just be aware. Um, this is your fuel rail pressure sensor. 
This is three wires. So this designates this is a 17 and newer engine. If you have four wires, you have a 16 and earlier. Here's the other cylinder head ground and your driver's side O2. So the way I rework it is really, it should be pretty hard to um, hook anything up backwards. You know, drivers is on driver's side, grounds, um, your injection. There's really no way to get this one to plug it in that. Um, all lays correctly. Now we have your driver's side and main trunk here. So the coils go in here. Um, this is your uh, fuel, fuel rail connection from your fuel pump. So your fuel line will plug into this. Um, it's kind of tight. I can bend it a little bit by hand slightly to get this sub harness to kind of squeeze down in there so you don't see it as much. So you can try to do that. Um, coming back over, again, I showed you here that this is your driver's side bank one. Coming down, you got your main trunk here. This is one of the main vital grounds. It goes right there to your block. This will reinstall like factory to your block there. This has your cam signal, VBT, and oil pump control right here. Down here is your bank one driver's side knock sensor. So you'll just run it back to the sensor up here. Following this back around, we now have your AC connection for your stock AC compressor. So the first one you come to that's real short, this goes to the back of the AC compressor. This is for your displacement valve control. And this goes to the front of the compressor. This is clutch control. Basically, I daisy chain these together. Um, 12 volts locks the var variable displacement valve and the clutch and you have a working AC compressor. Right here, this three pin connector, this is your AC pressure sensor connector. If you install this, the benefit of that will be that your variable PWM cooling fan will change speed based on the pressure it senses. Pretty cool, and you can program based on pressure on how fast you want your fan um, to go. So I, I use this on every swap and have a part number of the bung so you can install this on any AC system. You can just braze that bung in to your high side line. Coming into the, the rest of the harness here, this will go behind your starter. Not much to see, but there's your starter. Goes behind there, this is your crank sensor. You will also have a, a two pin sensor. This is knock two. And last one should be your starter. So here's your starter connection here. And that plugs into it. And that's that starter solenoid wire we saw here. So this passes through the entire harness. You shoot 12 volts with about 10 to 15 amps. That will engage that starter solenoid. Your starter will, will kick on. And uh, again, this I'm calling this the C10 harness. Uh, this is where I love to rework them. It's real clean. Um, they'll even work on LT1s. And I did my 68 Firebird the exact same way. And looks good. Looks OEM. And is uh, affordable too. So I just want to go over each and every connection. So when you guys get the harness, you know what to do. And what everything is. So... The first thing I do when I get a harness to install in the engine, I look at this ECU. This ECU will come to the to your front cylinder head on your driver's side in this area. So I kind of plop it down on this, and then I start with my, my coils. And just work my way down, and the harness just kind of flows around, and it's super easy to install. Let me know if you guys have any uh, any questions on this. And um, this will work for all truck engines all the way up to 2020. Thanks for watching. Bye.